This is the Sports Max Zone and it's a Friday. The West Indies kept alive. There are slim hopes of reaching the semi-finals of the ICC T20 World Cup following a thrilling three-run victory over Bangladesh in Sharjah on Friday. In a must-win contest for both teams, the West Indies posted 142 for seven from their 20 overs. Nicholas Puran with a player of the match 40 from 22 deliveries and Roston Chase 39 from 46. Well, they led the West Indies batting and chasing 143 to win. The Bangladeshis were restricted to 139 for five. Litton Das top scored with 44 from 43 balls. Puran, who led the team after captain Kyron Pollard didn't take the field, utilized five bowlers. They all took a wicket each with Holder leading the way, one for 22 and Hossein one for 24. Here's Ricardo Chambers with a look at how it all unfolded. Indies once again sent to bat and once again struggled to negotiate the slow pace of the surface. Yeah, well done. Evan Lewis out early, Chris Scale following shortly after. Holden, brilliant. Another good change. 29 for 2 in the power play with little power coming from the West Indies batsman. Catch it's the cry. Sumo Saka takes an easy catch off the toe of the bat. Debutant Rust and Chase held the innings together. Captain Karen Pollard retired hurt, and the very next ball. No, it's like, has he got a hand on? Has he got a hand on? He has. Vice Captain Nicholas Puran proved a saving grace for the Windies. The Trinidadian left hander reading conditions well to slam four sixes and a four in his top score of 40 from 22 deliveries. Puran. Man out there at extra cover, takes the catch. And Chase, dismissed in consecutive deliveries. Brilliant bowling. But good late hitting from Jason Holder with 15 from 5. And Pollard returning to hit the last ball for 6, propelled the West Indies to a defendable 142 for 7. When Bangladesh replied, it was Andre Russell who got the dangerous Shaky Balasan. Cost too much with the Walsh Jr. drop. The Bangladeshis matched the Windies with 2 for 29 in the power play. Jason Holder with the wicket of Mohamed Naeem. Chris Gale took a good catch as Akil Hussain also chipped in. Chris Gale diving forward at short third man. And reward for Akil Hussain. As did Ravi Rampal with the score 90 for 4 in the 14th over. Mamadullah with 31 and Litton Das 44 gave Bangladesh hope of victory before this Jason Holder catch at the end of the 19th. The tallest man on the field. Swung it West Indies' way. It left Bangladesh needing 13 on the last over and although the wind is floundered with a drop chance and miss field, Russell held his nerve to take them to a narrow win. And the fans celebrate. A wonderful game that has ebbed and flowed and the West Indies win by three runs. Yeah, victory for the West Indies. They're leaving the group one points table looking like this. And uh, the West Indies just lifting themselves off the bottom of the table. Bangladesh now bottom. England leading the group on four points as uh, Australia has four as well. South Africa, Sri Lanka, West Indies and Bangladesh all with two points. But the West Indies uh, second from bottom there because of their a negative net run rate 1.598 at the moment. Uh, Chris Taylor, regional cricket umpire. Uh, we're also joined by fellow cricket analysts Fazir Mohammed in TNT and Nikhil Umchandani, Utam Chandani in Barbados. Uh, gentlemen, welcome to this, the Sports Mac Zone. A lot happened this morning. Uh, let's let's start here. Um, the West Indies won, but what a, a a uh, 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 final over by by Andre Russell. So many things happened there. It ended up being a good over, successful over for the West Indies. Uh, but it, it could have gone differently as Bangladesh um, didn't, um, you know, take their chances. Let's start with Fazir. Okay, I'm, I'm honored to be opening the match. <laughs> I'm not too sure there uh, for for a while, but. Um, I think it was untidy, but but a win is a win. Uh, well, when you look at it overall, uh, the the performance reflected the standings uh, with the the batting that was indifferent, and the fielding which was substandard, the bowling which was sometimes all over the place, and it really take, took a, a couple of moments of inspiration to really take the West Indies over the edge. That catch by Jason Holder right on the boundary's edge for the tallest man on the field, uh, the over from. Uh, Russell uh, with 13 runs needed and, and he really uh, kept it on target even as errors were being committed 
in the field. So yeah, the, um, mathematically the West Indies stay alive, but even if they had lost, they would have still had a mathematical chance, but a win is a win. And uh, again, it still leaves a lot to be desired mm -hmm. if the West Indies really have a realistic chance of progressing to the knockout stage of the competition. Yeah, Nikhil, uh, statistically, it, it would suggest that the impact of Jason Holder and Roston Chase, who did not play in the first two games, had an impact on the result today. But um, first of all, are these two changes that you had expected? And, and how satisfied are you with their effort first time out for this tournament? Yeah, Lance, it's a fantastic question. Personally, I think, you know, based on what we saw from those two guys, Chase, obviously, I'll start with him. His ability to play that stabilizer role. Obviously, we hear about this, you know, in T20 cricket, not necessary. But I think on these sort of surfaces where it's tough, you get that variable bounce. Someone like a Roston Chase to just stick in there, hold an end. I think it was so vital. Um, I was kind of surprised they didn't actually utilize him with the ball because you did have some left-handers, you know, Liston Das, uh, Mohamed Naeem, the opener as well. And then Jason Holder, man, um, you know, expected him to go straight in the team based on, on the team's struggle in the power playovers, getting those wickets. And I think he did just that. It's actually amazing to see his stats in the UAE, Lance. 20, 28 wickets in just 15 matches at an average of 16.5. And then with the bat in hand, he strikes at 129 and averages 23. That's in 15 T20 matches in the UAE across his career. Yeah. I just think the fact that he can sort of bowl through phases, we saw how valuable he was in the field, obviously taking that catch. Mm -hmm. I think, yes, it was a... This probably, to me, is the most balanced West Indies team, but I'm not going to only pinpoint those yeah. two guys because I still think it was the full team performance. Yeah, all right. Um, uh, Chris Taylor, I've been mentioning from yesterday that you, you umpired in 17 CPL matches, so you've been close to the action with a lot of these players. There was a lot for the West Indies to do to strategize for today because um, a lot of the players have been short on fitness and so on, and we saw where Holder went straight into the team, even though O'Shane um, Thomas was picked as a fast bowler ahead of him. And he hasn't played yet. Holder comes into the 15 and gets straight into the team. What was the thinking behind that? Well, I just thought that Jason Holder brings all three facets to the game. I don't think O'Shane, O'Shane Thomas has been, well, he hasn't been fully fit. He has been struggling as well. I don't think he's at his best point in his game in terms of his fast bowling, that 150 kilometers per hour delivery that we are looking for, for him to be the X factor. At O'Shane Thomas's speed of 135, he's in and around everybody else. And I think West Indies don't gain that X factor from him like that. Jason Holder, however, comes in with three facets to the game. You saw the brilliant catch he took on the boundary, which is important in terms of fielding. The important runs he scored, 15 or 5, so he can bat as well. And of course, the ability to bowl in all areas of the inning, of the 20 overs. He can bowl up front and take two wickets early and swing the ball. And he can come at the back end when you need to keep things tight and snap some, er, some late wickets as well. So mm. I thought definitely Holder's inclusion was a big deal. It should have happened earlier. Mm -hmm. And, and Roston Chase as well. As I said, it's hard to ignore 400 plus 500 runs in a, in a tournament just concluded a month ago. And 10 to 15 wickets. I, I agree with Nikhil that I was surprised that he didn't get a couple overs from Ross and Chase at all. Mm -hmm. But I thought the inclusion of those two yeah. guys were, were, were the difference. Yeah, gentlemen, um, Faz, when we spoke to you yesterday, you suggested three possible changes in the, in the uh, West Indies 11. We had two of those uh, three changes. Um, the team didn't play that well. You just suggested that both teams didn't play very well today, suggesting uh, the reason why both are at the bottom of the table. But is there anything in the performance, gentlemen, starting with Faz, that, that gives you confidence that the West Indies could win their last two and force their way into the semis? Maybe not confidence, but hope. Uh, as far as... The, the, the good thing is, well, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. The West Indies' next match is almost a week away. It's done until Thursday of next week uh, against Sri Lanka. And then two days later, they play their final match against Australia. If anything, then they will probably have a better idea as to whether or not they really have a chance of sneaking into the semi-finals as, as maybe a, a second place team. Uh, so that might uh, affect the, the, the approach, their attitude, whether the spirits will be up or down. But I just get this the feeling, Lance, Chris and, and Nikhil, that there, there isn't the, the sort of energy that you usually associate with the West, with the West Indies team, even towards the end there. Um, you know, players looking frustrated, throwing their hands up in the air, smash, slamming the ball into the ground when misfeels happen, rather than encouraging each other. It's almost as if they're feeling the pressure of this situation. Maybe they're, they're feeling uh, the, the backlash mm. of what's said about them and their performances. 
Yeah. And they were just able to respond. So, so yes, where there's light, there's hope. But there's so much work to be done. When you look at the batting in the top order, it, 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 it really begs the question as to where's all this experience? Where's all this, this, these heaps of matches over so many years to really be able to keep the score moving along and, and credit, as, as Nikhil said, right. to the contribution of Rustin Chase. Mm. But, but Faz, even though you mentioned the energy, the fact of the matter is if you look at the end of both innings, both when we were bowling and, and well, when we were batting first and when we were bowling, it was good ends. If you look at the energy in terms of how they would have finished the innings in terms of when they were batting, the celebration when they accomplished those runs, and then the celebration at the end of the game when Russell bowled that over, that energy was very positive. Now, as you say, we can only hope that that kind of energy will spill over into the matches to come because that's the kind of energy you need going into the game. So I agree that it didn't start with a great deal of energy from either side and that's because they haven't been winning. Bangladesh has been struggling to win. In fact, both teams almost tried to lose the game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when it came no, to, to, to the to, to, to strengthen Fazi's point, yeah. some of what Fazi is talking about happened in that final Andre Russell over. The right. sort of frustration that the, the players were showing with the... Because um, of the drop catch yeah, and misfield and the so on. Misfield and I so think on. it was that desperation yeah. to win. Yeah. And, and I think that that is... I, I more look at that as a positive thing yes. at the end. That yeah. positive... Yeah, you know? Nick, Nickel, um, Puran had a tough job today because the regular captain was off the field for the part of the game that the captain is most needed. He's, he, he, they're fielding, strategy with field placing, using the bowlers and so on. Uh, your thoughts on Puran's effort today as the team leader? Um, he didn't give Chase a ball, but he suggested post-match that the, the faster bowlers were doing well enough to keep them. Yeah, I think I was pretty impressed. You know, obviously a young captain, Lance, but... The fact that he was sort of able to get it right in terms of the execution, obviously he's very lucky to have the likes of Dwayne Bravo, who is one of the most experienced T20 players of all time, alongside him, Jason Holder, the former West Indies captain, Chris Gale, and the list goes on and on. But I think overall I was impressed, also with his batting approach, you know, very impressed. The fact is he wasn't getting any runs, averaged 7.7 .7 in, the, in the IPL in 10 matches, but... I think that time, you know, spent in these conditions would have really benefited him today. And just to see him come out in a different role at number six today and just express himself when we needed it most. Because they hadn't hit a six up until the 15th over. He came in and hit four. So I just think in, in it sort of with the momentum carried on from his batting approach then to on the field. And just to get back to your guys' point in terms of the passion, you saw him sort of throw the ball in the ground when Russell bowled that final delivery. I think, as far as what I'm rightfully mentioned, they are feeling the pressure of expectation, but it's good to see that they want to win this badly. You know, they know mm -hmm. a whole nation, a whole region mm -hmm. is, is at home watching these performances. Yeah, and we have to remember that uh, Nicholas Puran had captained the West Indies team to their series victory over Australia in the Caribbean earlier on this year. So um, he has, uh, for the second time this year, shown that he can handle the leadership role. We are going to break. When we come back, we talk about Kyron Pollard because a lot happened with the West Indies captain today and there is a report about a leg injury that forced him off the field um, and uh, not taking a part while the team was feeling. Uh, we'll be back with more on the Sportsmax Zone after this. Back on the Sportsmax Zone, Captain Kyron Pollard retired hurt while batting in the 13th over with the West Indies, 6-2 for 3 in their crucial T20 World Cup match against Bangladesh earlier on Friday. Pollard was on 8 from 16 deliveries at the time. He did return to finish on 14 from 18 but did not take the field as the Windies went on to win by 3 runs. Reports out of the Windies camp saying that Pollard suffered a left leg injury but also advised the player is still being assessed by the medical staff. Nicholas Puran, who deputized for his fellow Trinidadian and was named player of the match for his game-changing 40 from 22 deliveries, addressed Pollard's situation at the post-match presentation. He, he looks fine. The medical team is still working with him, but he should be all right. Um, you know, you know, even him, you know, he's had an injury 
you know, walking back out there to bat it in a six, a vital six. We could see now, you know, why he's a wonderful leader and a human being as well. You know, those little things adds up a lot. And you know, we as young players look up to that. And you know, you know, we t we we try to be be like someone like that in the future. You know, at the end of the day today, you know, you know very happy. Okay, so no one knew exactly what had happened when Pollard was taking the field because there wasn't any visible injury, no, no limp or, some, or anything that he was going through. Uh, um, but we'll talk more about that shortly. Poor and also spoke about what it was like taking charge in Pollard's absence. It's tough managing all the players, you know, a lot of players, players with a lot of experience as well, you know, making decisions becomes tough sometimes. But in saying that, you know, I must commend the guys and you know, everyone give me the full support. We you know how important this game was today. Um, you know, all hands was on deck on the field. You know, unfortunately, we didn't really, you know, take our catches, take all our catches, but the energy was really, you know, really good. And, you know, the, the belief was there. The guys believed that we were going to win and we back our experience to, you know, close off the game in the end of the end it. Yes, yeah, so Nicholas Puran uh, leading the way and giving West Indies cricket fans uh, a smile on their faces this morning as they got a narrow victory over the Bangladeshis. So I was mentioning that when Kyron Pollard left the field this morning batting, um, no one knew exactly what happened. The commentators at the time weren't, weren't clear either. Um, Faz and Nickel, your honest feelings at the time that it was happening um, about what you thought was happening with Pollard? Faz, okay, first. You, yeah, yeah. If, if I was completely at a loss because I was just trying to understand what was going on. And the, the, the thing is that, and, and, and I mean, these things should, should not be a big deal. We should be, be told in a matter of minutes. It, it seems as if it's a tie strain, it seems as if it's a groin pull or, or whatever it is, and it's receiving treatment, he's expected to resume. It's three, two lines, three lines, takes five minutes to, to, to work that. But there is this culture of secrecy that I've spoken about before, because during the T20 series in the Caribbean, Obed McCoy was injured. Uh, Fabian Allen was injured, and we were waiting days to find out exactly what the situation was. And, and I really think that it, it is not that big a deal just to let the media be aware of what the situation is. is the captain of the team, of course. And it, it will, it, it, I don't see it giving any team an advantage or the opponents an advantage to know that someone is missing an injury. It's just a matter of understanding that transparency is the best way to go. Yeah, Nickel, there were, there were fans looking on who were a little disconcerted by, by what had happened there. And uh, until some information came a couple of hours later from Cricket West Indies media arm that he had a, a left leg injury, uh, there, there was a feeling from some people that he just looked frustrated and um, needed, needed a break at the moment. Uh, at the moment, it doesn't appear as if that is what happened. There, there is a, a, an injury that we are we are being told of, but um, Pollard is under a lot of pressure, isn't he? Yeah, Lance, I was one of those fans. You know, I really puzzled as to what exactly was happening. But there were suggestions, you know, on the various social media platforms that it was tactical. I know, obviously, from speaking to some of these players, how the heat in the UAE can sort of affect you. You know, when you're batting, when you're bowling, etc. Um, so I, I really didn't have much expectation. I think I agree with Faz. I think we should have probably been able to find out the news right away. I'm not sh so sure as to why we weren't able to, but nonetheless, you know, <laughs> I don't think in terms of it being a tactical decision that if Pollard would have not, you know, stuck it out. So I, I yeah. figured as soon as he went off that it had to be an injury. It was just such an abrupt way because we, they had just come out from commercial break and just to see him walk off the field, everyone started asking questions, but nonetheless, uh, I hope he can recover soon because obviously his leadership is very important on the field, as Puran would have just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And obviously his batting and, and just our own experience is needed mm -hmm. in this West Indies camp. Yeah, um, my co-presenter, uh, Chris Taylor, uh, isn't ruling out the possibility of some gamesmanship on, on Pollard's part. Chris? No, I would like to put it as a stroke of genius. I, I thought 8 from 16 deliveries, not knowing where to go. Uh, might have felt a bit of a niggle, niggle, but based on the state of the game, might have said to himself, you know, with... With, with Puran, Russell, Holder, Bravo in the hut, maybe those guys will do it better. And he, he proved it right so. I mean, I, I, th I thought it could have been very much tactical. Yes. Um, and maybe that's why it wasn't released at first. But whatever it is, it was a brilliant move. Yeah, but so you that know, injury you, couldn't have had better timing. Yeah, but it didn't start out that well <laughs> because Andre Russell, who came in, uh, went for a diamond duck, they call it, um, out without scoring uh, after not even facing one legal delivery. So, uh, Faz, the immediate aftermath of uh, Pollard's departure uh, didn't look too pretty for the Windies. 
Well, you know, I'm tempted to say that's why we're called Tricky Daddians, but we, we don't know the. <laughs> but maybe it was shades of a Roberto Duran no mass moment, just walking away from <laughs> with Sugar Ray Leonard and Nikhil. That's way before your time, but you'll have to do your research. <laughs> you'll have to do his research. But, 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 but really, I mean, the thing is that, and, 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 I, and I take Chris's point that, you know, maybe that's why they were delaying with the, with the announcement, but that's, that's the modus operandi. And I find it hard to believe that they would that he would do something like that. But uh, if if he did, well, okay. Uh, but but you know you know Faz is Polly Polly has a track record of doing he's a, 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 a few a few unorthodox unorthodox things on the field. Yes, indeed he does. Well, yes. we, we remember many of them. I mean, what a no ball when Evan Lewis was a couple runs away from getting a hundred. Yes. Yes. And so they, they have been okay. very smart player and does certainly play the mental games quite a bit. I wouldn't put it past him. I, I mean, we did see the physio come out at some point and give him a couple of tablets. But as you said, he could have probably have felt a slight thing, but then in a quick moment thought about the status of the game and, and you know realized that boy, this is not my day. Mm. Well, at the time, that's why we, that's, at the time, that's why we have that's why we have social media to, to just the things. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, uh, Nickel, you, you've been around the CPL um, a competition for quite some time and very close to the action. I, I think you are, you are very exposed to Kyron Pollard's personality and so on. How much do you think it would have taken for him not to take the field when the West Indies were going to try to uh, limit the Bangladeshis as they tried to um, get this winning total? Yeah, and I think, Lance, that's exactly why I don't think this move could be tactical because I think Kyron Pollard, being the leader that he is, and just from what I've been able to observe of him through the years, he just likes to be in the action, likes to be that sort of father figure to, to the younger members of the team. And he sort of is able to manage these big personalities well. You know, he's done it at the Mumbai Indians, been captain of them for a long time. Uh, when Rohit Sharma is absent, he's done it, obviously, successfully at TKR, the Barbados Trident back in 2014 when he won the competition. So... I think he likes the lead, and I think if it was tactical, Chris, you would have you would have seen him on the field. So the fact that he couldn't take the field, I'm gonna so give him the benefit of the doubt and say that yeah, I, I do think it was an injury. But no, he definitely loves that leadership role and and that father figure role. And I think they the players themselves also benefit from him. I think he's he potentially the best white ball leader we have in the Caribbean. Yeah. And Chris, um, the fact that the West Indies don't play their next game until next week, Thursday, whatever the niggle is that Pollard has, certainly gives him enough time, we would think, to get himself physically ready for this next assignment. Yeah, and that would be the hope. I, I certainly agree, Nikhil, that the importance of Kyron Pollard in terms of leadership, the father figure, likes to be out there as well. Um, so yes, hopefully he will be able to recover. And there are a few other players with niggles as well. So time in this in this. Um, in this in this aspect would be good for the West Indies team for them to get up and ready for the for the next encounter. So I think yeah that will be important as well, especially the aging legs of, of many of the players that they are depending on. Okay, Nikhil Untam Chandani and Fazir Mohammed, thanks for talking to us here on the Sports Mac Zone on a good day for West Indies cricket because the past week hasn't hasn't been very good. I, I suspect we'll talk next week. Indeed. Take care everybody. Okay. Thank you guys. Yeah, yeah. Take All care. Right. Still to come on the Sports Mac Zone. La Liga and EPL previews plus our daily NBA review. And don't forget to catch Women's Big Bash action coming live from Australia. That happens on Saturday night. Three matches for you. Sydney Thunder, Hobart Hurricanes, Adelaide Strikers, Melbourne Renegades and the Brisbane Heat against the Melbourne Stars.